The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 348,336. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 7,335. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 1,786, with total confirmed deaths at 72. We anticipate those numbers to change as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins filling in for Ben McCain. It's 4 p.m. on Thursday, November 19th. California Governor Gavin Newsom just announced a limited stay-at-home order that will take effect this Saturday. This impacts non-essential work and gatherings cannot take place between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. in counties in the purple tier. This affects 41 of the 58 counties in the state, including Los Angeles. The restrictions between those hours will be similar to the stay-at-home order back in March. The curfew is set to remain in effect until December 21st at 5 a.m. Now, just yesterday, 3,944 new cases of COVID-19 were reported in LA County and health officials fear the county could be headed upwards of 4,000 new cases per day at this rate. LA County saw new cases increase by 147 percent in the past few weeks. California Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Mark Gailey shared in a press conference today that people's activities and behaviors must change in order to drive the numbers down. And to help curb the risk, new restrictions will include breweries, restaurants, and other non-essential businesses that will have to close their doors from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Businesses with outdoor services need to follow a 50% capacity limit, and non-essential businesses operating indoors will have to limit their capacity to 25%. Advance appointments will be mandatory at nail salons and other personal care operations, and any services that require customers to remove their face coverings will not be allowed. Outdoor gatherings are limited to a maximum of 15 people from members of no more than three different households. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shared data on how COVID-19 is impacting some groups disproportionately across the country. According to the CDC, hospitalization rates for COVID-19 among patients who are Black, Latino, and Native American are four times higher than that of white Americans. A new study published this week from researchers at Stanford and Duke Universities also found that more than half of the patients who died while hospitalized from COVID-19 were black or Hispanic. The study included data from more than 7,800 patients who were treated at 88 hospitals across the country between January and July and found that more than 50% of inpatient deaths were Hispanic or black. 25% were non-Hispanic and 6.5% were Asian. The study also found that Hispanic and black patients were more likely to be uninsured and were younger than non-Hispanic white and Asian patients. Well, here's an interesting new study that just came out. People who walk their dogs may have an increased risk of catching COVID-19. This was part of a study that surveyed people's hygiene habits, sociodemographic profile, mobility patterns, and medical conditions. Other highlights to the study included findings that suggest living with a COVID-19 patient increased the risk of contagion by 60 times. Working on site at a workplace increased the risk of contagion by 76% and walking the dog had the strongest risk of contagion by 78%. Researchers tracked more than 2,000 people in Spain during the country's initial lockdown in the spring. 
This was published in the Environmental Research Journal. And while it's unclear if dogs acted as a host vector for the virus or if the individual owners came into contact with COVID-19 elsewhere in their day-to-day -day lives, researchers say dog owners should pay extra careful attention to personal hygiene as the cold and flu season is upon us and COVID-19 cases continue to surge. Well, five months after its originally scheduled date, the 2020 NBA draft finally took place last night virtually. The Minnesota Timberwolves selected Anthony Edwards with the number one pick of this year's National Basketball Association draft. Edwards, who is just 19 years old, averaged 19 points, five rebounds, and two plus assists in 33 minutes over 32 games at the University of Georgia this past season. The six foot four, 225 pound guard has drawn comparisons to Dwayne Wade and Donovan Mitchell. Edwards lost his mother and grandmother to cancer over an eight month span in 2015. And he has worn the number five throughout his high school and college career to honor them both who passed away on the fifth of the month. The number two pick went to the Golden State Warriors who selected the seven foot one center James Wiseman. And the third overall pick of the NBA draft went to LaMelo Ball, a Southern California native who briefly attended Chino Hills High School. He'll begin his NBA career with the Charlotte Hornets. Well, it's not all good news in the sports world today. Following the World Series championship for the Los Angeles Dodgers, the organization just announced layoffs were going to take place throughout the franchise as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to wreak havoc, financial havoc especially, throughout Major League Baseball. Since mid-March, when the MLB announced that spring training games would be canceled, no fans have been allowed back at Dodger Stadium. Now, this was a serious blow to the franchise that has led the majors in attendance every year since 2013, drawing nearly 4 million fans annually. The team issued a statement saying that the ongoing economic crisis forces the organization to make difficult personnel decisions going forward for the 2021 season. Now, it was reported that the Dodgers are projecting a loss of more than $100 million in 2020, despite winning their first World Series since 1988. The MLB expects the 2021 season to also begin without fans. The number of layoffs and jobs involved were not released. Well, the latest unemployment numbers were released today. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, 742,000 Americans filed for first-time unemployment benefits this last week. As of last week, nearly 160,000 Americans were added to the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program, which provides an additional 13 weeks of unemployment benefits. Continuing claims also took a significant drop, falling nearly 429,000 to now reflect 6.37 million, a pandemic low. This is the fifth consecutive week of declines as claims continue to improve from when the pandemic hit a peak with nearly 7 million new claims. The world's largest coffee chain announced big plans to help retain and attract employees. Starbucks Corporation sent an internal memo to staff letting all baristas, shift supervisors, and cafe attendants in the U.S. know that everyone will get a pay increase of nearly 10% beginning December 14th. Starbucks says they will also boost their starting pay by 5% to help keep and recruit employees. Starbucks President Roseanne Williams says the increase is one of the most substantial investments in pay in the company's history. Employees who have been with the company for three years or more will get at least an 11% pay hike and the company will increase the premium it already pays above minimum wage in every market. The company has stepped up support during the pandemic, expanding its emergency pay for store staff impacted by COVID-19. 
It also provided temporary child care and distance learning support, as well as hardship grants for workers facing hard times during the health crisis. Corporate employees at the company's Seattle Support Center have also been instructed to work remotely until at least October 2021. Kentucky Fried Chicken is redesigning its restaurants for the future. Plans include more drive through options and limited person-to-person -person contact and increased safety measures that were put in place during the pandemic. KFC unveiled two new designs highlighting diners' habits, which have shifted toward delivery rather than dining in, a trend that actually started before the pandemic began. The existing store design for KFC locations will eventually be phased out in favor of one of two new concepts. One design leaves behind the traditional dining room altogether, needing less square footage. This would be ideal for opening locations in busier cities where real estate is more expensive. Chipotle and Starbucks recently debuted similar designs that are smaller than typical locations. KFC's second design emphasizes the drive through idea, which encompasses 60% of the company's sales in the third quarter. The design features two drive through lanes with one dedicated to mobile orders. This plan would also include an outdoor seating area with a smaller indoor dining space. And it won't be hard to miss at KFC as the redesign includes KFC's classic red and white stripes and a brightly lit red bucket that directs customers to where they can pick up their orders. New designs are expected to roll out starting with three locations in the U.S. next year. A popular online lodging platform filed an IPO to go public on Monday. San Francisco-based company Airbnb, which was developed in 2008, has grown from helping 21,000 guests find a place to stay to serving nearly 800 million travelers across the world. Founders of the company developed the idea after using their own place as a bed and breakfast to make a few extra bucks to pay for rent. Well, they eventually saw a potential market for this idea and started with a website called airbedandbreakfast.com. In 2010, Airbnb launched their app and would also expand with opening offices internationally. The popular online marketplace for vacation rentals has more than 7 million listings in roughly 100,000 cities across 220 plus countries across the globe. Now, while Airbnb is one of the highest valued startups in the world, it also did take a big hit with the pandemic. In the June 2020 quarter, their revenue fell from $1.2 billion the same time a year ago to just $334.8 million. The filing comes just days after DoorDash also filed to go public. Disney Park officials are expanding its downtown Disney district to include parts of the Disneyland Resort beginning today. Fans can now head to Disney's California Adventure, where select restaurants and shops along Buena Vista Street will reopen for business. Now, this is in an effort to offer more options to those visiting the downtown Disney district, an outdoor shopping and dining area next to Disneyland and California Adventure. Guests will be able to enter through a gate closer to downtown Disney rather than through the main gates of the park. California health officials recently issued theme park rules that made it clear that Disneyland, along with other theme parks in Southern California, would not be reopening anytime soon. Now, according to the guidelines, large theme parks will not be able to open until the county is able to move into a less restrictive tier to ensure minimal risk of spreading the virus. The rest of California Adventure, as well as Disneyland Park, will remain closed. Well, another theme park nearby is also inviting guests back for a special holiday event. Knott's Berry Farm is kicking off what's called the Taste of Mary Farm. While the theme park remains closed, thousands of lights now decorate parts of the park, along with miles of festive garland and a variety of 
picturesque holiday settings to set the stage for the tastiest holiday event. More than 60 unique food and drink items will be offered on a tasting card, and guests can choose from popular flavors of the season, like the fully loaded turkey dinner tater tots or Comet's cinnamon bun with maple glaze and candied pecans. There will be 23 artisan local crafters, as well as Knott's famous glass blower and chainsaw carver. The only way to experience this is by purchasing tickets in advance. You can go online to see which dates are still available, as days are, of course, selling out quickly already. You can go to knot.com for more information. The city's first female police chief announced plans to retire come the new year. With mixed emotions, Chief Eve Berg shared the news that she would be saying goodbye in January on the date of her third year anniversary of being hired by the city of Torrance. She will have completed her 38th year of service in law enforcement and says it's simply the right time for her and her family. Chief Berg is the 12th police chief in the city's history and the first female to head the department, which employs more than 225 sworn officers and more than 120 civilians. Torrance also has the largest law enforcement agency in the South Bay. She was also appointed to the International Association of Chiefs of Police Women Leaders in Law Enforcement Task Force. Now, this prestigious group is compromised of only 14 female police leaders from all over the world. Chief Berg began her career as a cadet in the city of Inglewood in 1984 and was promoted to the rank of captain by 2003. She was then hired by the city of Manhattan Beach in 2011 as their first female police chief serving that city for six and a half years before being hired by the city of Torrance. Torrance City Manager Aram Chaparian shared with City Cable that, quote, Chief Eve Berg positively led the department over the last three years through not only normal operations, but under some unique and challenging times. She accomplished many goals during her time in Torrance, improving internal and external relationships, communications, review boards, and protocols. She also worked on team building, engagement with employee organizations, and implementing body-worn cameras to increase transparency. Her accomplishments are too many to list, and we are fortunate to have had her leadership and expertise to lead the largest law enforcement agency in the South Bay. She will definitely be missed, and we wish her a happy retirement. In an effort to keep our most vulnerable community members safe from COVID-19, a local organization is offering a new program just for our seniors. The South Bay Village introduced the new Groceries Only Membership Program, which is a personalized grocery pickup and delivery service. To help keep our seniors safe, volunteers of the South Bay Village are doing all of the grocery shopping for its members. For just $100, which covers six months of service, a grocery list can be emailed or called in. Items will then be picked up at the member's store of choice. After checkout at the store, the member will be notified of the total grocery bill. The groceries will then be delivered contact-free to their home, and the member will then reimburse the volunteer. Now, normal membership for the South Bay Village is $500 per year, and with the membership comes services like transportation to medical appointments, handyman services, help with shopping, light yard work, and much more. But due to the pandemic, the organization launched a groceries-only membership. Tips are not accepted, and there is never a delivery charge. South Bay Village is a 501c nonprofit that helps seniors in the Torrance and surrounding areas remain in their own homes with the help of volunteers. You can learn more at sbville.org. Well, the city of Torrance is offering the North Pole a helping hand this year. Letters to Santa is a free program to the community for kids to write emails or handwritten letters to Mr. Claus himself. 
These can be sent to Santa at torrentca.gov or letters can be mailed to Santa Claus himself at 3031 Torrance Boulevard, Torrance, California, 90503. Now be sure to include your email address and City Elves will be sure to have Santa reply within a week from getting your email or letter. Kids are asked to make sure they get their parents' permission before participating. You can also call 310-618-2983 for more information. And be sure to mark your calendar for an encore presentation of Torrent Theatre's company's most recent recent virtual show. Annapurna was written by Shar White and directed by Jim Hormel. The story is about a woman named Emma who walked out on her husband 20 years ago. She hears that he is in dire straits and she tracks him down. Well, their reunion is charged by rage and compassion and brings back the worst and best of their relationship. This is a story about love and loss that you won't want to miss. The encore presentation takes place on Sunday, November 22nd. Go to torrenttheatercompany.com for more information. Well, as we head into the weekend, be sure to tune in to Weekends in Torrance. New episodes air at 2 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. As the pandemic has closed many facilities to the public, the Sierra Golf Course has remained open, offering a COVID-compliant destination to get your golf fix. We'll take you around this nine-hole course and show you all that it has to offer. Plus, a local coffee shop is hoping to win fans over even during the pandemic as they offer unique coffee blends, beans, and even cold drinks and boba treats. We'll introduce you to the owners of this mom-and-pop shop and share what makes this business so unique. Then we'll head to the Torrance batting cages. Now, during the start of the pandemic, the owners took the time to shut down temporarily, revamping their facilities to offer a state-of-the-art batting practice destination. The outdoor center is located at Wilson Park. I had the chance to take the tour personally, and I hope you'll join us too. We've got these stories and so much more. Be sure to tune in this weekend at 2 p.m. You can find us on Spectrum Cable Channel 3, Verizon Fios Channel 31, streaming on our website as well as on YouTube. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community. Feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, the Torrance Salvation Army continues to help those in need in the South Bay community through a number of different outreach efforts. One of them is the Torrance Salvation Army Food Pantry. They're dedicated to providing supplemental food on a short-term basis to local residents in need. And with Thanksgiving just around the corner, this is a great resource. People can come once a week for perishable items like milk, bread, and other essentials, then once a month for non-perishable foods. The distribution takes place at the Stillman Sawyer Center in Harbor City. To learn more and if you or someone needs help, please call 310-835-1986. What a great way for community members to help their neighbors, especially during times of need and throughout the holidays. Now, if you have a great story to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that is our update for COVID-19 today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday for new episodes of Weekends in Torrance. We'll see you back here on Monday as Rhiannon Trutanich feels in for me to bring you the latest. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Doctor, or is this with the nurse practitioner? Fantastic. Dad, lunch. Got some soup for you. You are loved. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, look at those freckles. This was.
is very much you fun. are valued <laughs> you are strong you are resilient You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides to support you and your loved one at aarp.org/caregiving.